<laughs> is Harkin a verb? It is. It is, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's when you express Harkness. Do you, you ever see somebody looking rough, yeah, man? You it's see like, Captain oh, man. Jack and you're Hark. harked. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Axel, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel, all under, really, Linux. Yeah. And that moosey, <laughs> horny thing up there is one Jordan. I'm so fun. horny. You are, man. Very moosey as well. <laughs> and staying up late past his bedtime on the Isle of Britannia. Pedro Mateus, together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Now, before we get started, we like to play a little game and seeing what's going on in each other's life organs. I want to go ahead and get this right out. Still playing with audio. Doing the dark arts, things were working too smooth, so I needed to throw some new wrenches into it, and it did. So, fair warning. That's about it over here, man. How about you, Pedro? You heard anything exciting? Have you built anything? Have you stuck things with your hot stick? N no, uh, I have uh, stuck a few things with the hot stick, but they're uh, out of reach right now. The <laughs> I did uh, fill out one of the SMD training uh, soldering PCBs, and uh, the LED lights up when I put power to it, so I, I guess it's working? It's just, uh, yeah, the holding, well, let's just say uh, I'm finally getting some grip onto what you'd qualify as my right hand, because holding the tweezers with teeny tiny ass uh, SMDs as I put the soldering iron just to melt the solder enough to get it stuck in place, it's like, there, done. I'll help the Omni Sire. It's kind of fun these days. It's almost a little bit lazy these days because you have the helping hand things with the little alligator clips on them. I remember. Just, yes. Yeah. I, those used to be called my teeth. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Make your dentists a rich man. Oh, hell yeah. How about yeah, you, Yeah, no, that oh. one's just oh. there. <laughs> oh man, so 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 much adulting, getting finances in order. It's it's exhausting. Three more weeks. Three more, Three weeks. more weeks. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tick tock, man. Okay, I, here, here's a fun one. I, I, I like to play just because I'm trying to save you money on LTE data plans. Um, have you called the internet? So, so update on that. I actually have been given a uh, because of, because of like the COVID protocols. Mm -hmm. I actually have a timing window on that. So yes, nice. It's yeah. It has to be done like the week the week before. So yeah, I, okay. I have that arranged. That's cool. nice. We won't have any um, mobile broadband horses, man. Oh man, the, I mean, I don't have to worry about that. I still have another month's rent on this place after the moving date, oh, so I can just stay here. Be like the one in the room. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's gonna be completely empty for this, except for this studio. Nice. Just like the inside of the horse, completely empty because we sucked it out. It's the Steam Linux update. Speaking of rent, oh, man. yeah, <laughs> this is renting uh, some space in your hard drive or your SSD, as the case may be nowadays. Uh, the new Steam client beta, uh, besides introducing the new uh, controller overlay design for remote play, it also has the Mesa single file shader cache format, which what? they say reduces disk usage and improves performance when parsing and modifying the cache. You do need the current, uh, well, it's not current anymore, but it was current when it first came out on the 16th uh the mesa master they say it's the 08 101 ace 22 oh when you put it like yeah. that <laughs> when you say current i think like, you're talking current current right yeah like not, not not well that's that's the thing it didn't even make it into the uh the mesa 23 release uh so you need to, you need to be running mesa git if you want to take advantage of this hopefully they yeah. get it in the point release for like may or something uh so that it saves people a bit of effort. Apparently it very near the originally the guy apparently had it in the system. He forgot to push the change. So that's always good. <laughs> Look, re re reading, reading through that commit log is like, oops, sorry about this oh, guys. Man. I, uh, I forgot to add this file. So I haven't, I've genuinely never really experienced like shader. hell like a lot of people out of, uh, I mean, it, it's a thing. It might take a minute or two every now and then, but it, it's a good feel when you start up Steam and you see it like run through a little thing. Like, hey, you're doing thing that I don't have to wait on. Well, the, 
And then, then you get like, hey, I wonder what's going on with my downloads. And you get like all the shader caches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh boy, that's, uh, that's going to be, that's going to take a minute. But uh, that's not the only thing. We, uh, one of our favorite things to come out of Valve is the, uh, toaster you know vr so if you look like if you want to look like you're getting face fucked by a toaster and just put the index on i, I prefer lobot from star wars you do he's got the thing on the back of that. <laughs> and there's a little bit of a mm, well there's a patent so it's not yeah. even speculation yes uh well i mean speculation on what the patents for a lot of patents get filed anyways but valve has applied for a patent for some new vr headset designs it looks like they have a bunch of the stuff shifted over to the back uh to help with the uh, the, the balance of neck thing my brief foray into um to vr land basically makes it clear yeah you kind of need some you need some wireless stuff there because um when you, when you're a guy my size and you decide to go out a little bit out of range you will take the computer that the, the index or whatever <laughs> yeah. is attached to with you so why are the solutions are good hopefully um hopefully with this design they can bring down the price of the headset they can bring down the weight of the headset so more people can use it i mean they, they still haven't given up on vr and i i think it's probably long long term it's probably the way to go so at least valve is putting in the investment to make sure that like there is there is frameworks and code support in place. Yeah. Hell, that's the only reason we can run VR on Linux right now. So well, you got to think like no matter where you where your stance are, like if you don't like uh, Nvidia, like this guy back here on the wall, uh, you know Valve did a very good job of pissing off Nvidia. Like, <laughs> hey, why don't you do this special port? And Nvidia's like, yeah, this VR thing. I'm like, then Valve came back I'm like, yeah, VR. Like, yeah, we're not going to use that. It- mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of fun, man. Now, wireless and eye tracking modules, that's going to be interesting having the eye tracking built in, wireless room mm-hmm. scale, and all that fun stuff. Now, I do got to admit, though, how, how long have we had workable VR from. Like five years now. It's about been a minute, four, right? five, four, four or five years ish. Yeah. Somewhere there. Pedro, are you with us? I am. I'm just looking at the because there seems like there's two different versions of the goggles, but I think one is actually on the back, not the front. No, it's no, just the, the, one the diagrams the are a bit off. Oh. <laughs> well, and, and, and these, these are just patent diagrams, so it's just like a VR headset where we have weight distributed this way or this way, right? Like, it's yeah. no no real technical specifications beyond like, here's a, here's a drawing. We've we patented beveled valved, edges. Dude. They're like, scribble some shit down just in case. But, yeah. <laughs> I, well, well, I've welcome to IP been, Love. I've genuinely been disappointed in like the just the lack of VR injury related videos. Or either that or I'm just looking in the wrong place, man. I think this <laughs> wireless is going to be able to fix that. Eh, but that's the thing. We've had there are already uh, plenty of uh, wireless headsets out there. Well, there's yes, like three Pedro, different but models. But to my point, I'm going to say this is going to be immersive enough to thoroughly distract the vict- I mean, player. <laughs> yeah well i i, I mean there, there's a there's already a couple of vr vid, uh disaster videos i saw one where like a guy put it on and he's like jumping around and then he just dives head first into the floor because he fucking forgets that he's uh yeah so there, there's, <laughs> there's a couple floating around i think th- i think it's also like i spent all my money on my vr headset so i can't afford a phone to record my mishaps <laughs> <laughs> but can but can you play Half Life, the original Half Life, on your VR headset? No, man. What do I look like a hipster? I, I don't need pixels Probably. in my life. This this is kind of fun, man. This is free Half Life clean clean room reimplementation of Half Life Deathmatch and Half Life Experimental and Quake C. Did I mention it's a clean room reimplementation? Totally clean room, you guys, because this guy really likes to say that. Now. <laughs> I'm guessing I didn't look, but I'm gonna go down a limb and say maybe the source for like source was leaked at some point, question mark. I'm guessing that happened because um there's a big emphasis on like totally did this myself. I didn't look at any code. And man, what do we think about this? Because this this is retro. This is like straight up in the Snyder cut ratio. So, yeah, that's back, back the when the- OG uh Half Life. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very I- uh cl- Go ahead. I was I was just gonna say like I, I play I was like I didn't I didn't actually play OG Half Life on a CRT I played it on a laptop screen so it wasn't actually a flat screen when I first experienced it. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, no, the, he does say it's, uh, it's designed to work with the content from the CD version of the game. Currently, I do not aim to support the Steam version, so 
that's where person draws the line. Uh, go figure. But yeah, no, uh, I do have the original uh, Half Life on CD, but that would require me to ask my little brother to make an ISO of it and then upload no, it so Pedro, I can download I'll quit it. Quit wasting. He just take a picture and send it to you. <laughs> I, I I think I still have a copy of like the OG CD copy of Counter Strike I bought when I was like. 12 years old i know oh, really? i know i remember i remember a lot of people were like really upset when uh, steam came out and they moved everything to like half-life 1.6 okay. because a lot of people people were very very attached to like the state of the modding support for like 1.5 and 1.6 like it eventually got fixed but that became steamworks and now installing mods is just like i go to the page and i click subscribe and now it just kept it magically kept up to date now um, isn't there a i think it's available for linux too like a mod uh not even a mod you can just download it. it's like half life uh deathmatch yeah a game on steam because yes. you know they were like hey we can make a quick game too there's deathmatch classic yeah and okay yeah, there's half-life deathmatch and they're like no yes. you can't just quit while you're at yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's it, it's cool like um I, I, I don't know if you if Rebuilding Half Life from the ground up is a fun little project, I suppose. It's a complex enough game that it would be challenging. Oh, yeah. And appa- apparently, this is also uh, compatible with a uh, essentially a ground room Quake reimplementation, FTEQW, uh, which has a bunch of like Quake levels for Half Life Deathmatch. So and this was expensive. created by someone who has an Oculus.org email account, so it's probably legit. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> y- Yukara. They have a they have a Patreon too, so maybe go check that out. Oh, now. right on. So, yeah. Pedro, you've been playing a game with glowing green horses. Yes, when you mouse over them. Uh, the <laughs> uh, Never Winter so Nights they, they, they Enhanced Edition. Green. Yes. Uh, and the um, I've been tracking the development version uh, because oh, well, there, there's new stuff coming and I want to play with the new stuff. And there's a new development build. Well, it was new like two weeks ago, but uh, I didn't see the update at the time and I only saw the update on Tuesday. I was playing this version. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, they have uh, enabled fractional scaling for the UI. So instead of just having the 100% to 200%, you actually get the fractional in-betweens now. Uh, They have uh, improved on the... Because they had introduced a new options menu, but now they've improved on it and it looks better. It sort of fits the original... um, the original uh, menu style uh, that they I don't know, had Pedro. I believe that's a Photoshop because they're like the character's heads not jiggling around like they're on speed. I don't think that's yeah. Th- that's because the character's not talking to anyone. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> that's that's because the screenshot was taken on Windows. Swamp womp. But yeah, no, that water the water improvements though that looks nice. That uh, for a game from two thousand and two. That that, that, that that looks pretty good. <laughs> it looks like there is a good amount of human feces mixed in that water, which is probably mm-hmm. diegetically true. So good, good on you for the that. The scaling, uh, the scale lurping of objects is now, now happens in real time instead of the object having to be despawned and then respawned. There is a new font, uh, new bunch of different things. Uh, that was one of the things that I pointed out while I was streaming is... I don't know if this font is better or worse for streaming, but y'all let me know. There was a couple of people uh, in chat at the time that said that actually looks better. So better is good. Better is fine. <laughs> but yeah. So, so, it's, so tell me about, still tell me about the it. new pathfinding. Because apparently now <laughs> things won't get lost. Maybe sometimes. <laughs> Uh, as the stream on Tuesday pointed out, uh, that is a bag of lies. <laughs> that is filth well, and lies. <laughs> well, as as you know, any sort of any sort of pathfindering is abhorrent to Dungeons and Dragons three point five. Womp womp. Um, so uh, there, there's, the, the, uh, uh, t- t- I, I like I love watching you two argue about this. It's just, yeah, it's the monkeys with the knives. I'm like, yeah, how about it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh this, this, this is why you take some backups right oh man no joke I, no i thought pedro would yoink this story since he's a um, huge Ro- fan roblox of this player. game it's all he plays man it's roblox uh robocraft and they had uh what's known in the, in the industry as an oopsie doodle yeah so <laughs> to be fair it was their service hoser that <laughs> a non-voluntary uh oopsie doodle <laughs> So, yeah, their data center, OVH, um, had a severe issue that oopsie doodled all over it their database. caught on fire. <laughs> it happens, man. It was very warm. Now, 
they do state that, you know, they normally do a backup each day. This happened to be in the middle of a backup. So somebody, somebody on that team got to walk outside and go, fucking really? Um, <laughs> now. <laughs> well done. Well played. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's the best time for the backup to fail is in the middle of the backup. <laughs> Well, so at least you can credit, roll back. Though, they do have backups, and they're going to be like a day behind. All your data bits are going to get restored, and you can continue driving around. I know, Pedro, you did a stream, had a couple people join you. It did, yeah. yeah uh, and uh, Mir uh, also streamed for his uh, Twitch channel at the time. That's the game we're throwing chairs at. Oops. The- <laughs> Whoopsie do. Spoilers! Uh, <laughs> oh, no! Yeah, the um, actually, they're the latest posts because they've been posting like almost every other day like updates on when the servers will be back up and they uh, on the latest one they do say that it's working internally so it'll be a couple of days probably until okay. they can have the servers back on for everyone nice <laughs> good to know no. yes jordan we we I saw this and I'm like, wait a minute, we've played this game. Oh, the, oh wait, uh-huh. enough people played that game to make yeah. a new one? <laughs> yes, uh, I think the first one was a Kickstarter baby and it was relatively successful enough that they went and made a second one, Dead Age 2, Redneck Final Fantasy, uh, except probably now it's a little more Redneck Darkest Dungeon-y, according to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Very, very similar to the first game, uh, zombie survival with a turn-based focus. Um, everything's weird in 3D because uh, they missed the point of Darkest Dungeon. But <laughs> well, the first one had the, that, you know, 2.5D. Yeah, the, the, yes. this one, this one does as well. Um, but uh, instead, uh, instead they're taking more of a Darkest Dungeon approach uh, for the combat system. And uh, they also added a Final Fantasy style sphere grid so you can have lots of customization, which is something that a lot of RPG fans like is just like being able to completely customize your character, which this game will do for you. They also have a new faction system and a supposedly better design narrative. Like, I, so I'm, I'm interested. I really did not like the first Dead Age. I thought no. it did not work, work particularly well as a game. I wonder, like. There, there's potential there, so I hope if they feel like sending us some keys that they uh, that they've been able to learn from their previous mistakes and make something actually decent. Because you know, zombie survival RPG, it could work, uh, but the first one didn't. No, and uh, the- spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure out what's going on back behind the scenes while you guys are talking. I'm like, what's causing that? Yeah, the, 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 the next scene transition, like Dark Side shows up for five minutes. Yeah. And- <laughs> It's very, it's yeah, very no, important. It's, the first one, uh, I remember we were kind of curious about it because it had a bunch of positive reviews on Steam. Still does, like uh, 3,700. Very positive uh, uh, rating on Steam. And then we played it. It's like, oh, that that's, that's uh, yeah, no. Well, I was curious <laughs> as what you two would make of the game initially because this is turn-based. I mean, I can kind of... Darkest Dungeon's good enough to where I don't like the turn-based genre of that, but it's got enough going for it to where I'll play it and I'll even watch Jordan when he's playing it. And uh, mm-hmm. this, uh, the original version of this, it didn't do anything for me. Okay. I mean, effort, I effort was made. For effort was made in the first one. It's not. It wasn't lazy. I think they they maybe were you know punching a little above you know had aspirations were mm-hmm. greater than that's, what it, they could it's deliver. That, it's that Unity asset store. It's like, oh, we don't have to make any of the assets. We can yeah. focus on the gameplay, Got right? Base, right, you guys? Yeah, Ideally, it, yeah, That that's how the assets would work. Well, that's how the assets work for like two games out of the whole Josh, Unity Pop Ghetto on Steam. <laughs> works, action, baby. Captain. <laughs> Yeah. Our- oh, <laughs> building spaceship resource management. Dude, Man, these are two leaked. things we desperately yes. need on Linux. <laughs> yes, uh, the derelict void. Uh, it's uh, it's a trash bag of space. <laughs> like, oh. uh, yeah, where you it's have so to right manage now. a spaceship. And uh, it is, uh, they do say, they call it a roguelite strategy uh, resource management game. And effectively, you are just ensuring that your crew survives going from point a in space to point b also in Oregon space. trail <laughs> basically yeah uh and i i don't know if this is the kind of uh, space survival that i'm after i love something like this but i don't know you played Pedro, in i'm first a little person. worried there's too many hexagons in that screen it scared me off <laughs> <laughs> something in first person or third person with a more action focus 
keep the roguelite, that's fine. But I did try um, Void Bastards, but that game was a little too reliant on RNG and actively dicking uh, you over when it saw you doing really I good. Think, I think you're looking for Everspace, right? Like, that that's the game you really want. N- no. <laughs> no? Everspace? No. I don't want Spreadsheet Simulator, no. Oh, wait, no, no not, 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 ever, not Everspace. It's the, it's the fly around roguelike one. I think I'm, you're looking I'm, for I'm Everspace. Getting... Oh, no, no, no. Not Everspace. Oh, um... That game. Type in not ever space into Google. <laughs> yeah, that 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 one. I, one. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, reading reading a lot of the reviews here, it seems to be very very hard and very very RNG based, which makes me really think. Yeah, this is just Space Oregon Trail. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that, that, if, if, that's, if it was a legitimately Space Oregon Trail, I'd be down with it. I'm like, okay, but, but like, what, I, I, I'm looking at it from this is not be my gem. Best take I can get from the trailers and the descriptions: like you fly around, you pick up people, you build some factories, but space factories, then then, then you die. It's no. the ship you're building. The ship. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, that episode of Doctor Who. I don't know if I need to. Be able to. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 they they stole it from uh, the inter, uh, not the Andromeda Strain. God, I can't remember the fucking title to any sci-fi. Uh-huh, welcome to old the, age, bitch. What the hell is wrong with my brain? I need a deck of neuro. <laughs> to solve my mental problems seems to Pedro yeah yeah hi <laughs> uh, the, the, no apparently the game that you were thinking of is called Everspace it's just that I was thinking of Eve and confusing the two yeah ah, no, my bad on that shit. one Eat yeah, apparently shit. my neuro deck uh, <laughs> needs uh, some building because, well... That's a lot of hands. Yep. Give that guy yeah. <laughs> uh, Neuro deck is a deck builder that, uh, instead of tackling the standard fantasy setting, it decides to tackle uh, psychological issues and how you deal with them and you have a deck with everyday things and actions that you can do. Uh, to deal with those uh, psychological issues. Now, the reviews are mixed right now, with a lot of people um, not exactly agreeing with how the mechanics and presentation gel uh, with the subject matter. Something, something, Ludo Donkey Disco Bobbles. And the... uh, Yeah, Ludo Narrative Disco Pants. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) I do like the deck building and roguelike genres as I mentioned earlier Uh, so I am curious I am very much curious and it's not terribly expensive Uh, it's uh, 10.99 in pounds never mind yeah (laughs) it was 10.99 in pounds yes but to that price Pedro it's like less than three hours long if you're just derping your way through it well I mean that's kind of the the point of those those like deck builder roguelites is that the games are short but the one guy was saying like oh of like the three options you can zoom through all of them in about two and a half hours so what do you think about like having action points and stamina and drawing power like I, I, I hang out word lately. <laughs> you don't want I, my opinion. <laughs> I, I I don't know about that. Like I'd, I'd have to I'd have to see how it like factors into the gameplay loop. Um, it may there it's it's a bit of a contentious issue. Again, reading the comments, some people are able to tolerate it. Some people really don't mm-hmm. like it. Um, I don't, I don't know. Theme theme wise, it seems like it could be interesting. Uh, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I would I would sort of be inclined to agree with a lot of the other reviews where treating mental health as like a thing you can game away is not. A very useful bit of abstraction. Well, it's also another thing that, like, you also want to address it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, address it. Yeah, but yeah. Dude, they're probably but, you know, trying, you know, man. I don't, I, you know, you, you messing around with stuff like this is always going to be like this weird fifty-fifty thing because you're going to have people like, why don't we ever tackle like real problems in this in games? And somebody comes like, well, I'll give it a shot. You did it wrong. And then you're back to the I, loop of why don't people do this? for this it's, reason? <laughs> it's def- it's definitely hard to get right. That's for sure. And I rights think, matter. Um, of I mean, that's the problem. There's no like right. Well, there, there's not. Yeah, it, it's it's per it's per individual. You're tr- you're yeah. trying to you're trying to hit you're trying to cast a wide net and hit as many people as you right. can. I think uh, the game we threw cheers at uh, the pretty one with the long cinematics and the that one was a pretty good one. Uh, Senwa, Hellblade Hel- oh. Hellblade Senwa Sacrifice. Okay, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that one was pretty good. Uh, it, it, that did a very good job of showing it. It didn't do a very good job of teaching people how to address it. <laughs> well, I mean, most people aren't a badass Viking lady who can stab their problems away with swords. <laughs> and, you I'm know, sorry, make the problem worse by taking uh, that boyfriend's head onto 
you know. <laughs> listen, you, listen, you can write your lollipop chainsaw fanfic on your own time. We got to we got to talk about deserted. Let's talk about dessert. Um, yeah, so it's a 3D action adventure with light RPG and narrative elements with the with aesthetic looking like it's from out of this world. Remember that game, that super hard game? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, this basically looks like, yeah, if out of this world met Hyper Light Drifter. Is it possible Drifter, to build a spaceship without warp missiles? Yeah, but it looks like it looks like poo-poo. So, well, I, I mean, what about the Heart of Gold? That, I mean, that has the infinite improbability drive. That's what I'm just saying, man. <laughs> uh but but anyways yeah it's a run run around slash him up uh action rpg roguelike thing um it has a very very distinct visual style um it's in early access right now so they are developing it uh it's a little it's a little on the price set for early access at 2279 canadian that's what like 20 bucks us um mm-hmm. so yeah maybe, maybe that- this is your thing yeah, no, that does look like my thing because yeah, it looks very hyper light driftery. Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, mechanics and wise, with like the sword. And, yeah, 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 with with, with the mm-hmm. and, and yeah, the it, it, it dodge the, teleportation thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it has the sol- <laughs> sort of smooth textualist out of this world type thing. It, it could definitely yep. work as a game. Uh, I can, and I the can definitely see this. And purple clowns for our audio listeners. Of course, <laughs> always and. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Uh, it definitely looks visually interesting, though. So if yeah, you want to check that out, you, you what does can. this thing require to? It oh. is still in early access, so keep around. that yeah. in mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> hey, I'm down with it. Um, unfortunately for Mac brethren and sisters, no love. Just, no, just, no, no working Windows on M1 and Linux. Oh, that that that'll be the case for well, the rest of time. <laughs> Yeah. No, 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 no. People are still doubling down on the Mac gaming, you guys. People, people really want to play video it's games a real on these things. Shut up. There are dozens of us. Dozens. Oh man, uh, if you ever want to feel bad, I mean, I genuinely do. Uh, before we get out of here, because we have been doing this show long enough to where, like, straight up, just jelly of the gaming. Um. Oh, Mac is getting all these on games. Mac. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You got to rewind a decade ago when we started. This is before Steam was out on Linux. Mm-hmm. And we would look at Mac users and we're like, "Jeez, man, you guys got all the cool games and stuff." And we've come and then to we found out to- that virtual programming was porting them too. Oh yes, this is where we learned about. That's where I learned about virtual programming. <laughs> yeah, was, right, right. Uh, I was talking to somebody. I'm like, "This Witcher port's pretty bad," and they're like, "Oh yeah, they've been cocking up Mac ports for a long time." Uh, so I'm like, "Oh okay," but now we're sitting here in 2021. I think we should pretty much just play anything we damn one. Yeah, pr- mean, Proton baby. Yeah, it's also a problem. It's like, oh, <laughs> click well, the play it's, button. Yeah, play oh, hey, button. there we go. Okay. That, that's cute. <laughs> ha. Strange times. Indeed. Coming up next, Gado has a new release candidate. Wine gets some proton fixes, and pixels go insane. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, the news are here. The full of news. <laughs> Yeah, the news no, are here? less steam related news. Uh, there may be one or two that may or may not harken back to uh, the horse. Have you ever but, harkened uh, something? <laughs> is harken a verb? It is. It is, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's when you express harkness. <laughs> Do you ever see somebody looking rough, yeah, man? You it's see like, Captain oh, man, Jack and you're hark- harked. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 listen, I harked real hard right now. I'm just saying, in oh, my no. pants. If you if you want to help buy me some more pants, you can head on over to our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. You got a lot of cool stuff for becoming a Patreon. Yeah, you, you, get ac- you get access to our Discord. Lots of stuff with the Discord. You get uh, video announcements a little bit early. Uh, you get access to the pre-pre-super shows. And if you're an executive producer, you get a video version of that. That's pretty fucking sick. That's an extra hour of Linux gaming content that you can listen to live at 7.30 on Saturday if you really, 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 really want to. Listen to Pedro set up Jack. It's an it's an adventure. It, it really is. <laughs> it's it's that pretty interesting. I want to say... Uh, What's that? <laughs> if you're always... Oh, man. This, t- I, 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 I knew it before we even started. I'm like, Pedro's going to fight me every step on this, but I'm prepared for it. So. If you want to know where I didn't RTIRQ fight. I was just is configured... Because I don't know. <laughs> if, if you want to learn where you can figure RTIRQ, this is the podcast it's, for you. Uh, we go uh, places, man. A uh, couple of things with that. Uh, with our Discord access, if you want early access to... Uh, um, you know, we do live streams on Tuesdays and Wednesday. Wait, yeah, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Rabot, Fridays, and all that fun stuff. 
Twitch gets done with it. If you're a Twitch sub, you can just go ahead and watch it. But if you're a patron, you take, you know, give it a few seconds. We kick it over to YouTube and that gets posted in the announcement segment before mm. uh, it goes out. Like this show, this show will be up probably three hours before it goes live. Speaking of, uh, speaking of Twitch subs, if you're a Twitch sub, you can get into our Discord too. Oh, shit. And subscribe to our Twitch page and link that to your Discord. Do you as think well. that's a good idea? I mean, considering the, the, the relay bot is broken, probably. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just a thought there. Just, just saying. Wait a minute. Um, it, was this all part of some plan to get a dollar uh, from me or something? It makes sense uh, all, now. According, all according to Kei Kaku, then. Uh. All according to Kei Kaku. Yeah, uh, pay a little bit more of the Patreon and get access to the show notes. You can suggest stories to us. You can issue correction. So you can just kind of watch the whole process of the yeah. show materializing. It's kind of interesting. Uh, vaguely, sometimes... Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know. We got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. We have all sorts of sundry wares that you can buy, like coffee cups and t-shirts and masks and many, many other things. Um, speaking speaking of stores, we got the Amazon Wish Zone, uh, where oh, I give me a we, break. I'm just getting to the store, <laughs> man. <geez. laughs> all, right, all right. Yes. Look at look at this beautiful get a one store shot sticker for your laptop. You can get a Frank and Face tote bag. That will complete your motherfucking life. All right, Fr- Frank and Fache, man. There's a typo on that Fran and Face on that on that mask. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you want if you Fran is our new skeleton character that we're introducing. We're, I'm telling you, man. Hell, Alex. It's Frank's cousin. It's a great sticker. Fran. This thing has been sticking quite well. That's what I expect from a sticker. No more, no less. And it will confuse the absolute shit out of people. But Absolute absolutely. Uh so yeah, so about 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 them wish zones. If you wanna be a glowing name behind Ven Stone's head, you can check out the wish zones on our website. Uh it's on the support drop down. I don't and, know, it's kind of a losing battle at this point. Um because right? <laughs> I don't At know. This point, I, I think I, I, people will actually see your name. I remember so when that was a roll of poster paper. <laughs> oh, it and still I, is. It's on the other side of the studio. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Listen, it, once that gets filled up, we, we adapt. It will evolve. It will become something will new you, and I, horrifying. You know what? I had to think about this. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to come up with something for it, but it's probably going to rhyme with like a TV. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. thinking like some kind of digital sign. But it, you know, dynamically it, it, it scares me just a little bit because then that, there's a lot of options when you have you, um, there, there, there's a something we're going to be talking you. about mm-hmm. in the new segment <laughs> that might come in real handy with that. Oh, no. A <laughs> l- l- little bit of spoilers. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you if you buy stuff off our Amazon wish list, you can send us a note. We have to read it on the air. You can make us say a bunch of ridiculous stuff. You know what? I would use it. See, is, nobody's taken advantage of it, but like. Free advertising? Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is just straight up advertising for something. <laughs> go, go eat at Phil's Diner if if you're if you're in whatever fucking Podunk, Missouri, on the I whatever. Go, go eat at Joe's. Do it. Do it for brands that you don't like. Yes. <laughs> do it for Microsoft. There you go. Just straight Microsoft next week, all week. Br- brought to you by the Microsoft Surface and what? Xbox. Oh. Those that would be a brilliant day. Okay. Real news. Uh keep being awesome. Stick around for your name in the credits. You make the show possible. We don't read ads. Um you might not like what we say, but at least you know we're honest about it. And if not a patron, thank you, patron. They make the show possible. That's how we finance everything, hosting and all that fun stuff. So thank you. Now speaking of uh speaking of Patreon patrons you should or patrons you should be given money. Uh Godot, they have a release candidate out 3.2.4 RC5. Uh this is a bit of a an interesting post to read because it actually takes you to like a git log where the actual fixes are. Uh but nothing is really too crazy with this release candidate. They're uh they're just like getting stuff ready, coming down the Pope for uh, 3.2.4, uh, bug fixes, lots of uh, lots of just validation, uh, lots of uh, new uh, new like mon- uh, I, don't, I don't know. You can read the change log. It's available. Uh-huh. The link to this is in the show notes. Um, it's all it's all very dry. There's nothing really exciting or sexy coming in with what this. What are you talking about, man? Uh, like uh, they're adding support for the Apple M1 processor that will eventually run Linux, kind of. It already does, really. Uh, I, I saw, it technically Linux, already yeah. does. Avahi Linux, yeah, or Azahi, yeah. A- 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 Avahi is the network discovery protocol. Are, are you trying to imply yes. that? <laughs> I realized that as soon as they, I said it. They've implemented a no window mode for Linux, and that's about as sexy as it gets. But you got to save that last piece because they prevented audio corruption in the also driver. Under like, oh, 
audio experiment, which is like, beep, beep, beep. I'm like, ah, stop doing that. <laughs> yep. Fun times. So they've just been doing brilliant work. Man. I'm really impressed how far good has um, come from like, hey, it can technically do some 2D stuff-ish, kind of, to, uh, all right, we got a legitimate game engineer, guys. Start using it. Yes. Indeed. Yeah, no, the people need to start Let's, using it more. Yeah. It's not Project going to overtake uh, Unity, but uh, uh, people need to use it more. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe one day, maybe one day we can have the high quality open source engine that people will just default to. Uh, in the meanwhile, we got to run our games on Wine. Yeah, Wine has a new version out. It's uh, <laughs> 6.4. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit depressing, isn't it? Yeah, open source. Yeah, just run your fucking shit on Wine. Uh, speaking right, of... You'll like it. Yeah, speaking of, uh, so uh, a, lo- a lot of what uh, happens in Proton eventually gets upstream to Vanilla Wine. That's kind of the big thing that happened here. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, The Witcher 3, oh, Serious Sam Turbo 4. Cat, see, I quit playing Turbo Cat at like 7.1, man. Right. That's when it uh, sold yeah. out with the DLC. <laughs> Oh yeah, pay to win. right. The <laughs> DLC yeah, for cat right software. I can't, now. <laughs> I can't even imagine what DLC for cat software would cost, given how like expensive it is normally. Dude. But yeah, uh, they, they've implemented uh, VK object type surf- surface the Chronos expansion. So now these games will work. Um, if you want to play these on vanilla wine, if you're ob- if you object to Proton for whatever reason, um, Pedro is also going to bring up something about. UDP network encryption, which I had to look up because I didn't know what it was until <laughs> until I read it here. So, yeah. Pedro, tell me about it. The uh, DTL security protocol is implemented now, uh, which is, yeah, it's just an extra security oh. protocol for your network connections over wine. The, uh, the ones that I noticed were the uh, theming improvements. So if you if you're using your GTK th- theme for wine applications a lot more uh elements of your whatever application it may be running in wine that inherits uh the windows theme should work accordingly now and never winter the mmo a uh, couple of versions ago wine sort of broke the texture rendering for that game you could still run it if you're running it on steam you you were okay with um i think 513 is still fine it's just if you're using wine proper that you couldn't see anything so that's been fixed very good so very much appreciated well let's talk about the most important fix because they fixed vulcan sunlight in the witcher 3 finally oh yeah <laughs> I, I think this is on the uh the wine dxgr render DXVK. as well so okay is, I don't uh, know. Yeah, because the, the, they have their they have their own DirectX implementation. I don't think they are fixing stuff for DirectX, but how uh, dare for, they? Uh, for I mean, they might. They might <laughs> yeah, they have VK. Um, Wine VK. Superman or needs his sunlight, or he'll die. <laughs> it's it's true. That's why he's wearing that black suit now. That this they had to Photoshop. So <laughs> absorb the spectrum. Yeah, that's that's also why they had to unphotoshop his lip. Um, but you know, you can use this new wine release to play some uh, play some epic game store games. And now, you don't right? have to be online for it anymore. Ooh, no, you don't. It actually uh, works in offline mode. They say it's now possible to run it completely offline, which is am surprising. I alone in thinking <laughs> the hell was that a reason a thing to begin with? Oh, uh, this is hundred percent like oh, we just assume that you're connected to the internet. Like we just eat shit if you don't even have a network connection. <laughs> Yeah, and they probably are trying to authenticate you with the Epic uh, servers, which, you know, yeah, touch uh, debatable. Because they, they had a bunch of the auto-update stuff in the last release, so that yep. probably depends on being online. <laughs> and uh, they've also, uh, I suspect that they've also Lutrist something from Lutris, <laughs> which is the ability to add a cu- custom Proton or Wine binary from anywhere in your system, something that Lutris has been doing for a while. Didn't if you have a custom v- version of Wine or any Proton version, it will pick it up and you can so select it. How does Lutris, <laughs> I thought Lutris, like, Lutris no longer, I thought it got rid of, like, its ability to Proton. Uh, yes, no, so that was recent. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, it, it still detects like the any system installed wine. It does look in the Proton mm-hmm. directories and it does look in GE. Um, and you can still you can still make Proton. You can pick it, Lutris. but it's not going to work. <laughs> mm. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's interesting. So, I mean, that's that's an option for people like, hey, I want to use this version of Proton that I know that works. Uh, they can. Yep, yeah, that mm-hmm. is an option that's there. And if you're just milking the game store for those free weekly games there you go 
Yeah. So, so then, why why do you need a TV behind you again? Shut up. Because pixels, <laughs> man. I do with my OBS <laughs> stuff. I wanted to throw this in the notes, man. Uh, this is Pixel Match Switcher. Don't try to say that fast or you'll implode. For OBS Studio Ad, it is just nightmares, man. I want to throw this in because they sent like this ginormous pull request to OBS. And, you know, the pull request is massive. It's going to take some time to get poked through and, you know, picked apart and all that. What is it? Shut up, old man. Okay. There's no standalone plugin for this. I'm just going to say that. Like, they have their own fork of OBS. Just, I, you got to get in the scope. You got to get in the headspace of what I'm getting to. Because the level of absolute fuckery this can unlock is kind of interesting. I mean, load and hide UI elements alone just based on what's on the scene. Using the pixels. Using the pixels, Pedro. That sounds dangerous. Kind of yeah, fun. it is <laughs> because what they're doing is you give it a reference uh, image, and it looks for stuff that looks like the template. And if it finds it, it does a preset action, whatever you want it to do, like say hide a particular element of a scene or change scene entirely. And you know, automatically doing that is interesting. If for nothing else than seeing people uh, panic on stream when it inevitably goes wrong and it starts doing things that you didn't expect it to start doing, I kind of want to see that. <laughs> I'm thinking about, like, you know, if you're doing, like, esports or anything like that, yeah. you don't have to have, like, yeah. an, an extra <laughs> team to keep people with all the stuff coming mm -hmm. up. Or if you're doing, right, like, when, d, &D. When, when you bring up the stat streams yeah, or something yeah exactly like stats like if you're doing like a dungeon crawl stream or something like that and you got mm -hmm. you know because you not necessarily have to you don't have to think about it so much as what's going to be on the game screen of like hey man i can trigger this with a little bit of forethought and just have this stuff automatically rolling through mm -hmm. yeah which uh re really helps out if you have if you're just like a one guy running a show mm -hmm. right because, I mean, we, we have three people. If, if Ben needs us to talk, we'll just be quiet and let him sit there awkwardly because, you know, that's what we no, do. No, that's what you do if I need somebody to fill some air. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but no, but no, uh, th th this has a lot of this has a lot of potential. It has a lot of uh, interesting things that could be made manifest if this gets merged, which given it's the OBS devs, maybe you need to use this guy's fork. It, it's going to take some time. I, I was in the development channel when this got dropped and it was brought to my attention. And I'm like, that's going to be a lot to go through. And like, it is because it's big chunks of OBS, which probably from the best, we're going to be honest with you. And it's going to work on Linux. So, indeed. Yeah. All right. One last little bit before we get done with the news. It's all about something that is perfectly flat. Do not believe the conspiracies. No, no, no. It's just a projection. It's being projected on top of the bowl. Uh, but uh, <laughs> there was a an old game uh, called Lunar Lander and many different uh, spinoffs of it. And uh, a friend of the show and uh, Patreon extraordinaire, Katana Steel, is, well working on uh, his own version of it. Uh, he's learning some Godot. So let's try and recreate Lunar Lander. And uh, there's the attribution down at the bottom using Godot 3.2 and the background picture that you see uh, in the um, itch.io page. It's from page. NASA. Yes, it's based on the uh, Earth rise from the um, Apollo 8 mission. So you just so, have to guide the little oh, spaceship using down RTX into lunar soil. Or, um, <laughs> it, it, it might, I don't know. It might as well be because, like, th this, this is this is clearly a project where uh, someone someone is learning Godot. Because I, I said, you know what, Katana's doing this. Oh, I, I like that guy. We've 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 hung out in person. A couple I, I times. wanted to give him a mention. Uh, now, yeah, uh, the, w w I think the twist is this is basically what runs right now. Um, you fall, you smack into the moon, and the twist is it's immediately yep. seg volts. You, you, it, the, 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 the lander crashes, and then the game crashes, and that's oh, it. Yeah. it's a meta game. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> run with it. Run with that. Just, in, indeed. I, I, I don't know. I, I look forward to seeing this develop. Uh, it's cool to see Renee do some stuff. Uh, so I mm -hmm. hope uh, I hope it progresses into something. You can check out his Git repo. It's in the show notes. Maybe you want to help him it's out. It's on Maybe GitLab, you want to help him not GitHub. Yep. Yeah, just go GitLab. play with it. And, you know, put yep. a Konami code in there, turn the lander into a brick. 
<laughs> yes. I mean, I mean, this is probably forked from Brick Simulator. Mm. True facts. Coming up next, breakdown. Can't drive this MC breakdown. Hammer. Yeah, I mean, the, something's going to break down. Welcome back to the chairquisition this week. We're throwing chairs that can't drive this by Pixel Maniacs done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks US. What is it? Race your monster truck while your friend builds the road. Go too slow and you'll explode. Hey, it rhymes. And yes, it's as chaotic as it sounds, especially in four player split screen. Uh, we got to thank uh, Pixel Maniacs for sending us some keys to this game. Uh, I guess who, you, who I, we we all rated it the same. Who wants to? Who wants we, to we did. Uh, I want to go last. So you you want to go last? Okay. You so know, you'll I'll, go first, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go first. Just to, just to spite Pedro. So um, yeah, <laughs> on uh, Fedora 33, 64 bit with the i7 6700K and the RX 5700 XT. Yeah, Gnome really really thinks that this game wants to eat poo poo. Every time I launch it, it's like yeah, this program's not responding. Do you want to? Do you want to <laughs> just kill nine it? And then when I'm about to hit yes, oh, the menu shows up. So I think Gnome kind of jumped the gun there. Uh, but on XFCE. Uh, uh, Fedora 32, 64-bit with the I, with the R9 3900X and the 1080 Ti. Everything works out of the box. I will say on AMD, don't uh, run it at UHD. Mesa does not run or does not play particularly nice with this. On NVIDIA, it's fine. Uh, but you know what? Knocking it down to 1080p, you're not really losing a lot of graphical fidelity. Everything's already pretty basic in Unity Asset Store. So, eh, whatever. Uh, works out of the box with the DualShock and Switch Pro controllers. But uh, the mappings are all wrong. And... Yeah, have fun explaining that to a 10-year-old. That's a that's a fun thing to try and put into context. Um, so uh the, and, and the soundtrack is just kind of all right. It's there. Fun-wise, yeah, one of the uh one of the stealth benefits of uh being adopted into domestic life is now I have ready access to a player two and a player three. And you know, for the co-op levels, they're they're fun enough. Uh you either build the track on for other people to race on, uh, to see how long they can go, or you're trying to build a track so that they can go collect all the things from like the single player game. Um, it does wear out its welcome pretty quick. We got a little bored after about 45 minutes of it. Um, and we tried a couple of rotation schemes too, like so every uh, after every level, uh you switch roles or after every couple levels and even like doing that it doesn't really keep the game all that fresh um and here's the thing if if you're building the track honestly your best option is generally just to spam blocks because uh the person who is driving will generally move a lot faster than you can place blocks so just making sure there's stuff to drive on is kind of kind of the big deal here um and oh boy yeah that that driving man the physics here are definitely some physics uh they do have a versus mode they have a 2v2 capture the flag but you do need four players for that i don't think either of us had the opportunity to try that out so we can't really speak to that mode single player real garbo though there's a time limit to capture all the flags like in the second multiplayer mode uh but you gotta switch between laying the track and driving on it and there's a delay as well so you have to time things out properly it's it's really really fucky i'm not that big a fan of it uh nowhere near as fun as the multiplayer so what we end up having here is something that might be fun in the rotation of a party of like various party games play it for a little bit you rotate it out move on to the next game uh, I will say, though, if you want achievements, if you really like achievements, this game will shit achievements out in your face for everything. Uh, so all that said, I'd say wait for a sale. It's two cheers. Yeah. And uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. It holds 144 at 2560 by 1440 mostly uh every now and then there's the occasional um hiccup but that seems to be mostly w uh when loading in the graphics themselves all seems to work including the vision obscuring clouds and the water effect that you're seeing on screen right oh, now fuck the water jesus christ yeah. <laughs> yeah. it makes some noise as well and the controllers work the dual sense still needs uh, steam input to be properly mapped uh the dual shock i didn't notice any issues it was properly mapped for me i don't know the um I mostly played with the keyboard uh, for the driving and the mouse for uh, building the track. That's, yeah, that um, seems to be the way to go, at least for me. As for the fun, it is fun, but it does get a bit repetitive very quickly. 
Uh, and the repetitiousness is made worse by the two game modes that are currently available. There's supposed to be a third one uh, where you drag a 3,000 pound concrete egg behind you. They call it Capture the Egg. And uh, when Ven and I were playing on stream on Friday, it wasn't available. And like yeah, Jordan he, already he, he, mentioned. Four players. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's. Um, yeah, the forever alone mode, like Jordan already mentioned, is frustrating. So it's. There's a timer uh, on the person who's driving as to when they're gonna explode, and the only way to make up the time is by collecting the little uh, bits below the balloons, like you're seeing there. The. Uh, you pick that up, you get some extra time, and then you can go into build mode and build more track and then drive as quickly as possible to the next one. And yeah, and then, it, it and then gets, the camera doesn't catch up. Yep, it gets very frustrating very, very quickly. Uh, it, it's one of those games that requires multiplayer to be enjoyable, and even then, we start to run into that lack of variety and, you know, that third mode being locked behind the four player gate. Um, uh, I think there could be something you could do for a single player mode to help it. Namely, you have the AI build the track as you're driving along or the opposite, you build the track while the AI uh, is trying to drive along in what you're building. That'd be great. That'd be amazing. The um, the other way is to have like AC generate, auto generate a track and you just drive on it. But all of my suggestions I can make as many as you like but it really all boils down to it just needs more right now it doesn't have enough to be enjoyable uh, in both <laughs> the th single and multiplayer it, it even different car types to change the way how they drive and how you have to tackle certain objects it needs more because yeah uh, as it stands people are just going to hit the refund button as soon as they get to the point where oh yeah no i'm done with this so yeah two chairs all right so let's uh you know i can we know can we just all agree like watching i think we're having a good time watching pedro play. oh yeah oh, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's it's entertaining as far watching like these two people just bumble their way yeah. through this okay it's me I and the rando <laughs> I just wanted to say that because, you know, from the outset looking at it, like, hey, this could be fun to play around. Now, let's talk about on the technical level. What do we have? Well, over here in Finland, I'm running it on Debian, Debian 11, really, effectively, since we're in our freeze now. CPU, Threadripper, 1920X, uh, NVIDIA 2060, and 32 gigajoules of RAM. A little bit of kit. Now, no problems. Everything worked out of the box, technically, you know, full, full screen, window mode, no problem. Controllers picked right up. Very happy about that. Now, performance-wise, about 148 UHD, capping around 500 at 1080p using the OpenGL render. No audio or video glitches. Good, 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 good. I'm quite happy. Now, why is it? It's kind of interesting to just look at it and be like, hey, this looks really fun because this is a great proof of concept. And I am very, very excited to see what they come up with before leaving early access. Oh, right. <laughs> no, it's already left early access. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay. Since the developers, you lot probably going to be watching this. Um, I'm going to give a little shout out to the person or possibly persons on the team who said this wasn't ready. <laughs> you were right, sir or ma'am. Um, and if that person doesn't exist, you probably need to hire him. Just going to say this, man. Playing Lone Racer in Forever Alone mode is just absolutely it's just not a non-starter because you're required to build and drive the track, defeating the fun mechanic of the game. It's just not there. The other two modes basically tell you not to even fuck with them in single player. <laughs> like, nah, don't do it. You can, but we don't recommend it. That's a tough sell. Now, you're going to need some friends to get the most out of the guests. Uh, just you are, and that's going to be a challenge. Now, Pedro and I. As Pedro said, we played a little bit last night, Friday, release day, during prime time. And I sat in a matchmaking uh, session and told Pedro to search for another player. Then we played each other again after we were already playing. Mm -hmm. That happened. <laughs> True story. Well, I can't speak to how much fun you can extract from like three plus players or four players. Two player scrapes the bottom of the barrel after about 30 minutes. We've been streaming, playing games online and in recordings for over a decade. We're pretty fucking good at it. Even stuff that's not enjoyable, 
we're going to find a twist to it. This was genuinely fun for like 10 minutes. And it was kind of rough after that. No, 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 no. Um, you know, <laughs> we, we did the drone thing. That, that was okay. Then we went back to, you know, just making the maps. That was all right. But hey, check this out. You know, in the future, if they can get rid of like this dog shit, split screen co-op for online that that's a horrible horrible thing to do with and maybe like add a preview block for the tiles that are about to drop you know something like tetris maybe additional non-endless runner modes Those might be worth a revisit it definitely might but as it stands right now nah mm, you know what you had five years to put this game together and i'm still including the entire year of 2019 which no updates were made to it and um it was kind of cute because they even did a, we pulled the plug as a joke for April Fool's post, uh, but it kind of wasn't. It kind of wasn't, <laughs> was it? <laughs> you kind of, even on that last post, you were like, well, we're, we're done working on this, so we're pushing it out of early access. So hopefully the Triple uh, F got there's, you know, the money's worth from that grant and that, that thing. Uh, you made a game, part of a game, maybe. Uh, There's definitely the beginnings of a game there. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I, I think I think a lot of a lot of what Pedro says is right. Like as as much as as low I am to agree with him, but definitely more <laughs> variety in like the game modes, the cars, uh, just just something, right? Because after after forty five minutes, you've kind of done everything there is to do. That's kind of the thing, man. This is you know. No one necessarily hate this. Probably will be like the first thing you run into on the review page. I'm willing to take the Pepsi challenge. Let's see. What do we have? Okay. You know what? We're not too far off, lads. Uh, product <laughs> refunded is your most popular. Um, at this stage, no, I don't recommend. You drive straight, 15, wait till the game has completed content. Yeah. I. That was, that was like, what, 2017, though? So. 2016. It's still the top oh. recommend. But here's the problem same game. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 <laughs> Those that complaints is, are still valid. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like maybe even even opening up modding support, right? Like giving other people a uh, crack at like what's under the hood. Yeah, it might be me, might be just, the way to do it. I think I all of us we feel like there's a fun thing here. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, there's just so much missing. Yeah. Uh, uh. So and 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 so it just gets like a middle of the road score because like it's it's not actively bad. It's just. I mean, it technically works, and it it's regularly twenty bucks, and that's also a tough ask for what's yeah. On the plate. Wait, wait, wait for a sale if you really want to check this out. If this theme seems like it's really your jam, or if you have like a group of four people, well, you can. That's that's another thing because in order to get anything from it, you're gonna have to buy four copies, apparently. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind, kind of, or or at least have some roommates or some kids or something. Right. Yeah. But by right. the game, kids are more expensive. Conscripts. Yeah, yeah yes. you need conscripts to play this game. <laughs> indeed. indeed. Uh, so coming up next, we talk a little bit about our co-op experiences oh, no. and how it, it really has improved our friendship. Well, we you made it to the end. We made it to the end somehow. Fuck you, I but, skipped uh, it. Timestamps, bitch. <laughs> yeah, well, if you skip because you just like the hate mail, kudos. I love you technically uh but <laughs> if I, like to time Pedro, I gotta load the hate mail <laughs> <laughs> participate uh if you'd like to participate in the hate mail and uh i don't know tell us that we got something most definitely wrong because we probably did uh tell us how uh good looking jordan is you can absolutely do that uh tell them that this? uh I don't know. I told him to buy time. He's buying time. I'm not listening. Just let him go. I'm literally buying time. That's all I'm doing. I, I, I want to subscribe to your fan fiction where people call me handsome. I don't know. You can say whatever you'd like, and chances are, if you do a good enough job of it, it'll be featured right here on the hate mail. And if you'd like to do that, so go to LoadingScapeCast.com. You hit the contact button. There's a little form you gotta fill out. It's pretty easy. Just make sure LGC Weekly is the show that you're sending your hate mail to. Otherwise, we may be uh, compelled to misinterpret it as some constructive feedback. You don't want that. that what, what? What is that? <laughs> it's like normal feedback, but with like burly construction construction yeah. yes Ooh, I'm, I, I'm i'm excited and titillated by this our first A one animated gifts yes 
Work it harder, make it better, do it faster, make it stronger. Uh, this first one's from Straight X Engine, and uh, they say, "Hey, uh, thanks a lot for playing the cult mod we're working on. I'm sorry for any issue you had while playing it. We're still working to improve it. Thankfully, by the end of the month, a new version will be released. This motivates me a lot. Thanks." Well, I'm glad we can provide you some motivation to fix the co-op. The mod. Libra Coop developer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, I have a feature suggestion for you. Please let allies walk through one another. It is real dumb when, like, we get out of the way. I can't. Ven literally wedged me in a corner at one point. He's like, get out of the way. I literally cannot move because my arm is stuck on your arm and it's just like, <laughs> it's bad. It, it is, but. It isn't. It's a grieving engine, yes. <laughs> uh, he's 100% correct. I mean, I was trying to get in it. The problem is it's not clear who's really at fault either. I'm like, get right. move, dude. Like, you, I can. <laughs> yeah, like, no, the, the, the geometry of the level is like, now because you're standing here, I'm stuck, but you're also mm. stuck. And <laughs> so far, uh, it's been, I mean, compared to our playthrough of Meet the Freemans, which was uh, using Synergy, this, this has been relatively stable and relatively complete. So mm -hmm. uh, good job so far and uh, keep it up. But last week we were talking about machinery, you know, a new game engine from some former game devs, current game devs, but they're also making an engine. And uh, one of the things that they were doing on top of just telling SDL to go fuck itself, like, hey, man. We're going to be targeting Alsa and stuff like that directly. And uh, apparently there's a reason. Yeah. According to uh, Ertan, because he decided, let's just go and uh, ask the developers. And he says, ask the developers uh, behind machinery what they, why they didn't use SDL. This was their response. SDL is a great library, but I think that's good to have more uh, people looking at low level stuff. Besides uh, that, we have better control of engine code. Okay, of, that's of the open you, source project that, that source available. <laughs> you can just look look at it and change it if you need it. Uh, their engine's and, not open source or source available. No, the, the engine but, is but very as, much but close. But SDL the is. is. <laughs> yes, man, man. man if only you could. Already, wait, wait a minute. Have you not heard about the dangers of open source? <laughs> yeah, I, I heard it can give you herpes and yes. sometimes super gonorrhea. Um, here's the only like, thing I'm if you want to learn things, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that that that's great. But if you're trying to put out an engine and, and people to use to make games to play around with, you probably want to cut as much of your own work on it as possible. Also, there's the whole having to support individual platforms yourself, which is a mm -hmm. lot of QA. It's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of development outsourcing. It's that. a lot of cutting or introducing more work for yourself, which is yes, what you don't want to do. <laughs> I, under, I understand the logic behind. Hey, I, I'm, I'm very stuck on also. Um, I don't understand the logic behind it, man. Cutting out the overhead and targeting also directory. One of the issues I find with that is there's about six people in this fucking planet that are qualified to do that correctly and it, odds, are, odds are you're not one of them i don't know i didn't say that um but <laughs> and i i just say that from going back and forth with the guy who's in charge of the fire also firewire stack um tack just you know us talking back and forth and that's that's what the guy's dealing with the firewire stack it also directly and he's like man this shit's confusing so <laughs> uh, more power to you man best of luck and all that but hey at least they get a reason. Yeah. Yeah. You can, I mean, you can have bad reasons for doing things. Oh, man. Why you it like is that? a reason. Bad or no. <laughs> it why is a reason. Like that? All right. <laughs> Bye, On that so reason, cruel. we're going to cue the music. Uh, beautiful people, you could always come hang out with us uh, each and every Saturday night live here on Twitch, uh, kicking off at 830 for the public. If you don't want to be public, an hour before that, we do the pre-pre-super shows, and that's our production meeting. You get all the scandalous stuff all of our gossipy bits and uh audio testing and stuff like that come say hi they'll be in discord your patreon patreon.com forward slash letting team cast shameless plugs uh speaking of that at finstone on twitter if you want to reach out and uh touch someone maybe even me i'll get back in touch with you it's a thing and just at vin on our federated timeline thing over at mast.linuxgamecast.com 
I'm Jordan Spung. I am a cruel, cruel summer, and my malevolent sun is shining on you all at the Burning Fool on Twitter or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And I may have the long brown hair and the beard, but I am not your Power personal day. Jesus. So you can absolutely get in touch with me at and accounted for on Twitter, but um, no. No. <laughs> you Do are not my reach personal out Jesus, touch, though. Faith. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I like it. Like, uh, either, either time either of them post something on Twitter, I'm like, oh, they know how to use it. Yeah. It, it, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, at least, I at least hit retweet at least once or twice a week. <laughs> right. So do I. <laughs> Let's hit those credits. Yeah. <laughs> Smash that retweet, fam. I mean, it's better than fruit shaped erasers. Hmm. <laughs> Eh, yeah. That's debatable. <laughs> I mean, you can send it through the mail. We gotta thank all of the people making this possible. Our lovely supporters, our Patreons, our executive producers, like Aldius, Barb Ramp, Scott, M, Mr. Mis- 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 Fox Dog, Arthur and the Atomic Ass, Mike G, Empty, Drummer. There's like five mics in this group, man. Leave me alone. Our, our uh, Lone Little Nicky fan, Darkwing, NRC Monsters, Jack, L- Renault LePage, Ryder X Machina, Paul, Verdinuda, Justin, and Frost Claus. And With we got some death, death notes. Kick it in. Nova K, Basil, Jinx. Chad, Peter Romero, uh, Marcin K, System T, Greg H, Renee, Leonardo, Dak, Kim, Smash, Chris, Steven, Jill, and Benjamin. And all of the chatterlings, which unfortunately I am not good enough to read all of your names, but uh, some of you are Giovanni, Gronka Delonka, Linux Nero, North Ranger, Michael M, Nubbin. Uh, thank you very much, Break Time 0420, for the follow. Uh, <laughs> Steven, Mr. Amish, Door to Door Geek, Vlaunir, Martin W, hey, Whippy, uh, Ross Malata, <laughs> Dodger, Chris G, he has the incredible moments. lyric, <laughs> Rudy B, Daniel, Belric, and of course, library.tv forward slash at Nixon's Pyramid. How dare I don't you. believe it. No, I don't believe it. Not a fire alarm. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>